The new generation Apple iPad Pro was originally introduced in late 2018, creating a shockwave in the tech market. The biggest tech YouTubers brought us a shocking and very unexpected question. Was this super thin and powerful tablet good enough to actually replace a laptop for regular and even for prosumer customers? Well, at the time the answer was totally no. The hardware was more than capable, but the iOS 12 software limitations were too overwhelming. But it was in any case a step forward in the right direction. This was the case until June 2019 at WWDC, when Apple announced iOS 13 with surprisingly fresh new iPadOS that introduced almost all the features that were missing in the first place. But the question is still unanswered, can the iPad Pro completely replace a MacBook Pro for Pro users in 2019? These days the Pro world is totally overused. Well, I've been using an iPad and a MacBook side by side, so let's find out. <laughs> So what's up guys, Fabri here and welcome to Shades of Tech. Both the iPad and MacBook are called Pro because of their more than average tech specification. For my testing and overall experience, I've been using a 2018 iPad Pro 12.9 inch and the 2016 MacBook Pro, but for the sake of this video, I'm going to be comparing all the base model of the freshly announced mid 2019 MacBook Pro with Touch Bar in order to compare the best base model you can buy right now. So the base model 2018 12.9 inch iPad Pro is rocking equipped with an A12X Bionic chip with octa-core 2.5 GHz with 64-bit architecture neural engine and an embedded M12 core processor. It has 4 gigs of RAM. The battery is 36.71 watt hour. The starting memory storage is 64 gigs of flash. The starting price is $99. The base model 2019 13.3 inch MacBook Pro is equipped with an Intel Core i5 quad core 1.4 gigahertz with turbo boost up to 3.9 gigahertz. 8 gigs of memory, it has a GPU Intel Iris Plus graphics 645, a very big battery of 58.2 watt hour. It starts with 128 gigs SSD. The starting price is $29. So in terms of poor specs, the iPad Pro even for a 2018 hardware is really beating the freshly announced MacBook Pro spec by spec except in the storage and in the RAM department where it has half of 128 gigs and 8 gigs. Not bad for something that costs $299 less. Also the battery is smaller but having no fans, the battery life is very similar. To be honest, the storage is not a problem anymore because with iPadOS I can just plug in my extremely fast external USB Type-C 1TB NVMe storage I built in a previous video and I can work basically with all my movie library in my pocket. In any case, the MacBook Pro comes with a standard 128 gigs, which is nonsense for a Mac considering how much space you really can use if you want. You can easily match the capacity of the storage on your iPad. The RAM is also not a problem because the multitasking is handled very very well. And happened to me many times that I had several heavy load apps open at the same time in the background without seeing any signs of lagging or slowing down at all. So those two are the only technical disadvantages of the iPad Pro over the MacBook Pro. All the rest is pure specs show off. So talking about poor specification, there will be a lot to discuss, but I'll try to sum up everything in four main advantages of the iPad Pro over the MacBook Pro that I honestly think that are totally worth the upgrade. So first we have the screen. 
Second, we have portability and accessories. Third, we have the camera. And fourth, we have the fun factor and productivity. So the first thing you'll notice when you pick up an iPad Pro R2, the extremely smooth and responsive display and extreme thinness and lightweight. But the screen is perfect. I mean, honestly, it was the only thing that made me decide to buy it in the first place. It's a 12.9, 2732 by 2048 liquid retina multi-touch display with IPS technology and 264 ppi and especially 120 hertz refresh rate. The MacBook Pro can't compete with a slightly larger 13.3 but lower resolution with 2560 by 1600 always a IPS display with 227 ppi which is fine honestly it's a very good display but not good enough for me being limited to 60 hertz you can take advantage of the 120 hertz in every move on your ipad from the very snappy home screen to the smooth apple pencil drawing with very low latency to the gaming and it's absolutely a game changer for me also, the PPI is higher with a bigger resolution in a smaller form factor. In fact, the liquid retina display has rounded edges and very thin bezels, if compared to the MacBook Pro very thick corner. Probably the 2019 16-inch MacBook Pro will feature a cleaner look, but right now the iPad wins the title of most portable machine and sexiest Apple product. And the slim form factor creates an immersive experience of video as well. They have almost the same width but the bigger bezels mean a higher form. Also the iPad doesn't have a keyboard so it's basically half the thickness. Besides it's also half the weight and if we are talking about laptops and portable machine it's mind-blowing how lightweight this tablet is. You may argue that the iPad doesn't have a keyboard, but there are plenty of smart keyboard cases that don't impact very much on weight and dimensions. I personally choose just a case to cover the iPad on the front and on the back with magnetic feedback to put it on and off without any keyboard because to me portability means that I can choose the configuration I want to use my iPad in. Then I occasionally use the Apple Magic Keyboard which is very comfortable but I generally don't dislike the touch screen keyboard either. I don't want to have always a keyboard there because I don't always need it especially when I'm on the go. For example photo editing so it's all useless space and weight I can leave just in my bag and this is the part of accessory that you can use just when you need them like a keyboard the Apple pencil they are totally and specifically designed for the iPad another very cool feature is the beautiful camera setting and I'm not talking about the rear camera which by the way shoots up to 4k 60 which is totally overkill it's just not very comfortable to go around with a 12.9 inch tablet taking pictures but it's there just in case. I'm talking about the 1080p frontal camera with Face ID. The MacBook Pro just have a 720p so it's a very big upgrade and uh, it has Face ID. At first I was very skeptical about Face ID until I tried it on the iPad and I was very blown away. It's seamless and you just forget to have to unlock your device because it's automatic but still is very secure, adding all your notifications until you authenticate. The Touch ID or the Apple Unlock with Apple Watch on the Mac are good but are still a step back. And the last but not the least, the performance and the fun factor. In synthetic benchmark, the iPad Pro strongly beats the base model MacBook Pro and gets the same results of much more expensive CPU models. But what about real life? 
How do you define scenarios for a pro user? Well, I consider myself a prosumer, not a real pro, but for me, a pro product must be able to do everything it's supposed to, according to its category. So let me explain a little better. Basically, we are comparing the portable category, so a laptop versus a tablet. So a pro machine must be able to do everything a non-pro machine wouldn't be able to do. A simple example is video editing. You can't achieve normal satisfying workflow on a MacBook Air, but on a MacBook Pro you can. So, in this comparison I consider and tried all the possible user scenarios I use, except one, the video editing. The reason why is very simple and it doesn't depend on the capability or performance because those two machines are more than capable of 4K video editing. I'm not saying they aren't. It's just that I don't like video editing on a MacBook Pro, neither on an iPad Pro. It's just the total experience that is so frustrating, especially on the MacBook Pro, because it gets very, very hot and the fun is so loud and annoying. So, my general rule of thumb is never edit on laptops. I just use my late 2013 27 inch iMac desktop in my office, which is far more powerful than those new machines. That said, in terms of performance, iPad and MacBook Pro are both very, very good, and it's really hard to pick the best one. But I have found during my everyday use that Making things on the iPad Pro is fun and faster in terms of workflow because many apps are optimized for gestures and once you get used to it you can do things very faster. In this consideration played a big role also the use of iOS 13 iPadOS which is currently in beta which introduced many requested features like the external HD support the desktop mode on Safari and so on. Web browsing with Safari is exceptional. You can open many, many tabs as you like without problems, responding to mail, watching videos, playing, all taking advantage of the 120 Hz ProMotion display and the touch screen features. Also, I find myself very motivated for photo editing with apps like Lightroom and Affinity Photo because they have integrated support for Gesture and Apple Pencil and the workflow becomes so much faster and intuitive while on the MacBook and the trackpad everything was very frustrating and complicated especially using the brushes. So as the date of this video if I have to go out and bring me one piece of tech I pick the iPad Pro 12.9 inch is no brainer and I was really surprised to almost forget to have a MacBook Pro that after a few weeks of not usage was only collecting dust in the desk drawer. And the stranger things was that when I turned it on again it was very very strange feeling because I didn't miss it at all. I left the price as less consideration if you had an Apple Pencil and a keyboard, whether it is an Apple Smart Folio or an external one, you will get a little bit lower than the starting price of the MacBook Pro. So, in my opinion, if you have to decide how to spend your $12.99, they are better value spent on the iPad Pro with maybe some accessory that are fit for you more than on a 2019 touch of our MacBook Pro. And besides, you are totally future-proof. There will be much more to discuss, but I want to keep it very short. So let's continue the discussion in the comment section with your thoughts on the matter. Let me know what you guys think. Do you prefer a MacBook Pro or an iPad Pro? And do you think that an iPad Pro can replace a MacBook Pro in 2019? So that's all for today. Thanks so much for watching, remember to like or dislike the video and to subscribe with notification turned on to stay tuned on Shades of Tech. 
And as always, I'll see you in the next one. Ciao!